For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing, and now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino-style games to choose from, with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In the year 247 in the age of judges, Vartan was summoned home by a letter stating that his father has died under mysterious circumstances. Upon returning home, Vartan opened his mind to the possibility that his father's death in his hometown of Eterno was not everything that it appeared to be. Welcome to Ethereal Embrace. That's me, Vartan. Yeah, so I'm not sure what to expect when I get back to Eterno, but... Uh, at least I remember the food is good. And I gotta say, anything is better than what I just went through. The Letter Vaten, son of Kyrian, I write to you with dire news. Your father, Kyrian, was found dead under unusual circumstances. Wherever this letter may find you, we bid you come home to Eterno. Sincerely, with my deepest regrets, tell Mika. Day One In the Village of Eterno The scent of spring flowers greets Vartan as the carriage begins to roll away. Your childhood home is smaller than you remember, but by no means is it a small house. In fact, the house is one of the largest in your hometown of Eterno. But your travels since leaving home have exposed you to much larger homes and houses of much wealthier people. The wagon starts to pull away, leaving you in front of your father's old home, who has now clearly passed away. What does your character look like? Give us a picture of of you. Uh, he's a... Large fur bulg. Uh, he has uh, like a like a greenish skin with with uh, just red hair and, and and long beard. Let's say like his body type and everything is kind of like uh, oh my god I forgot his name the dude from Game of Thrones Drago. But no, no, Drago. Is it Cal Cal something? Oh, oh. Jason Momoa. Cal Drogo. Dang. Cal Drogo. Yes, Jason yes. Momoa. His, his like body type is like Cal Drogo. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And uh, like he's wearing his travel clothes right now, and uh, he's got a he's got a big war hammer and a great axe on his back. And Vartan, son of Kyrian, I need you to roll the first roll of the game, which is a perception check. Okay. That's a 23. Okay. Wow. All right. So you notice all the things. <laughs> First, your father never had a groundskeeper while you were growing up, but it appears that someone has been taking care of the house and property since he passed. The spring flowers have all been planted to line the path, and the boxed emerald bushes that line the front porch have all been trimmed to perfection. A whinny comes from the barn, showing that a horse of some sort is still present in the large barn out in front of your property. However, there's no smoke that comes from any of the chimneys that are attached to the house. So even though the property appears to be managed, it does not appear that 
anybody is is currently keeping the house warm inside. Okay. Uh, the barn is a detached barn, and it is off to your left when you look at the house, or you can walk straight up to the house up on the uh, on the porch. Uh, do I do I know this horse, or was the horse around when I was around, or new horse? So the barn itself is was used for travelers who were, who were coming to Eterno. Mm-hmm. A lot of them would would store their horses there, so there are a lot of stalls inside. Okay. Your father had a couple horses off and on throughout the years, but nothing nothing specific. There wasn't like a horse that you had okay. forever growing up that was your horse. Okay. But so so it could be one of your father's old horses that you do know. You can't really tell from outside and the barn is actually closed up for the most part. Okay. You could just hear it. Alright. Uh I'm gonna go in the house then. Okay. The path to the house is made of wood chips that make small noises as you approach the four-step staircase to the front porch. The two-story house has a face made of brick with a thick wooden double door that has beautiful designs etched into the face. The other three sides of the house are a mix of stone, which makes up half the wall of the first floor, and wood, which completes the upper floor and the second half of the house. A small cross space makes up the attic, but that is mostly designed as an access point to the roof. Okay. As you reach the house, the double doors are closed, but um, they don't appear to be locked or anything from the outside. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to open the door, go in. Okay. So you go in, and the front room is a foyer. A thin brown rug rests just inside the door. Dark wood flooring gives an instant feeling of formality to the foyer. A couple of formal guest chairs rest against the walls. Growing up in the house, you know that the rest of the house was never this formal. Not the dining room, not the office. But in this room, Kyrian, your father, accepted many guests who would knock on the door. Any guest that would knock on the door was allowed into the foyer. But many times would not go past this room. To the left is the library... There are doors that that separate the library from the foyer. To the right is the dining room. Memory recalls that Kyrian's office is just beyond the library on the left, if you were to pass through the library and follow along the wall. And then the kitchen is on the opposite side of the house of the... Uh, on the opposite side of the house attached to the dining room. Across from the front door where you're standing now, a hallway leads back to the coat room, the sitting room, and the washroom. And at the end of the hallway, an open stairwell leads to the second level. Okay. I'm kind of wanting to know what's going on. Maybe there's something here. Uh, I want to go through the, the library to the office. Okay. So to the left of the foyer, the library, if it could really be called that, is a small corner room. Two chairs sit next to a window, and two floor-to-ceiling bookshelves meet in the corner of the front wall. The door from the foyer is wide open, but the door that leads to the library is closed. A fireplace on the outside wall has fresh wood in it and has been cleaned recently, but the room shows no other sign of usage for days, maybe weeks. Mounted above the fireplace is a large war hammer, and the placard just below the hammer names it Furbog's Justice. Hmm. Okay. Do I do I recognize the hammer? Yep, the hammer's been there since as long as you can remember. Okay, okay. Um Yeah, I wanna Do do what do what do I need to like roll a check? Like what do I know about the hammer? Y- yeah, you can you can roll hmm, either a history check or an arcana check. Okay. I don't have either. Um that's a negative 2, so it's a 17. Oh, dang. Yeah, right. I'm rolling so even high. with a negative 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rolling has a good way to start a new campaign. <laughs> yeah. Growing up in the house, you knew that this was your father's hammer, and it was passed down to him from his father and so on. It is a solid war hammer, and it is combat ready. And as far as you know, it can only be activated. The magical properties can only be activated by a member of the Furbog 
bloodline. Okay. Your father would once a year go out and practice with this Warhammer for one day he said that it would keep the magic fresh in his mind hmm. the Warhammer is a solid heavy block head with ridges on one side and the other three sides are flat the top of the Warhammer has a six inch spike protruding from it um, in case you ever needed to stab somebody with a Warhammer Okay. it does have some magical abilities but you're not quite sure what they would be without potentially Practicing, practicing with this sword for, or not sword, practicing with this warhammer for one day to get acquainted with it. Okay, I have no reason to grab it right now, um, but that's good to know. Um, yeah, I want to. Uh, I'm in the the foyer. You said, or is you off? had just moved into the library? Into the library. Okay. Do I see anything else around? Like anything that stands out? Are you looking? Okay, so just. Just looking. Um, probably an investigation check. Because you said everything's like, it looks like everything's been touched other than the, the fireplace. The fireplace has been cleaned and restocked. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. move on to the next room then if it, everything else looks like it's been untouched. Um, okay. What I was going to his office. Yep, yep. So you walk through the library into the office. The office is another small room decorated with a large desk, three sitting chairs, a liquor cabinet, a shelf full of candles, and art on every wall. The office would be the room that brings back the most memories of your father. While he could be found working most days in the office, you were always welcome to join him. Beyond the office, a washroom connects to the sitting room, and uh, the sitting room is the biggest um, in uh, in the house, the largest room on this floor. Okay. Does it look like anything's been disturbed in this room recently? It doesn't look like any... Well, go ahead and make an investigation check. That is a zero. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I got a negative two, so... All right. Uh, I rolled a two. Thinking back of all the times that you spent in here with your father, you are kind of overwhelmed with the emotions of his death, and you didn't expect it to hit you this hard, Uh, so you, you can't really focus on is this room the way I remembered it or does anything look out of place at, at this point? Yeah. It's going to be like, man, what happened to you, Pop? And I, I'm going to I'm gonna head on out with the, the sitting room. Figured head out there just to kind of uh, decompress and, and just relax. Okay. So you go to leave through the office. You open the door to the washroom and quickly step through the washroom, which is a very small room, and into the sitting room where you see two other individuals sitting there. There is a half-elf and a tiefling that are both chilling in the room that see you walk in and everybody stops what they're doing and looks around at each other. So let's start first with introducing Tisha as Baya. Baya is a half-elf, pitch black hair, kind of pale, half-elf looking. Uh, She is 5'10", and she's standing next to Obik in very loose-fitting clothing. Very flowy. Perfect. And Ovik? I'm 6'5", big brawny guy, thick shoulders. I've got red skin, uh, long white hair tied in a ponytail and a white beard that goes down just past my collarbone and I'm sitting in a chair reading a book oh something real quick I did forget to say my height he's seven foot nine inches tall yeah I think that's probably a really good thing to to call out (laughs) he's very big (laughs) And you just walked into the sitting room to these two strangers that you have not met before chilling here. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting y'all to be here. Well, I wasn't expecting anybody to be here, but I, I did notice that uh, the fireplace had been cleaned out front and the place had been taken care of. I'm guessing y'all were y'all were the ones doing that. Um, no, that was like that when we got here. Oh, okay. Who are you? Well, I'm... 
I'm Vartan. This was my father's house. And who are you? My name is Baya. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Vartan. This was your father's, you said. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, sir, who might you be? I'm Ovik. I've been staying with your father for several months now. I knew him fairly well. Yeah, I reckon he didn't, uh, he didn't like being by himself too much. Yes, we had many conversations, spent many hours in front of that fireplace. So I reckon you heard about me. He talked about you all the time. Well, if you're a friend of my father, you're a friend of mine. Just then you guys all hear a knock out the door. The sound reverberates through the empty house. And you guys are on the back side of the house where the sitting room is. It, it really takes up almost the entire back quarter of, of the, the property. So the knock came from the front door. So you'd probably have to follow the hallway back to, uh, to get that. Well, I'll get that. I'll be right back. I'm going to head out. I'm going to head to the front door to see what, what's going on with that knock. We'll come. I'll come with. All right. So you get to the front door and you, and you open it up and there are two people there. Um, one you recognize as Priest Talmika. That's the person who had written the letter to you about your father. Priest Talmika is, a, is an older priest you remember from your time here in town or growing up here, that she acts more like an educator in histories of magic. She doesn't really give sermons or anything along those lines. She more like helps out where she can, and she also contributes to the healing for the town. Okay. She's a dragonborn woman with light purple scales. Uh, she wears an overcloak to keep herself warm pretty much for as far back as you can remember. Bifocals are tied to a string that wraps around her neck, and she moves a bit slower than than she used to from from what you can see. And she's but she's constantly like moving a little bit. The other person that is there is Judge Greystone. He's the judge of the the town, and in this town, judges act like they're, they're pretty much the lawmakers of the town. They uh run the court system the all the major decisions go through them um that's passed through the law of the land they're kind of just the the highest extent of authority when it comes to laws in in the town so judge graystone is there as well he's a human man with a bald head and a short completely gray beard uh he does not dress the part of the judges that you've seen from your travels but more like a commoner, you know, so he's wearing standard breeches, uh, you know, button up shirt, very dirty. Does he obviously puts a lot of time and work in. He's got his sleeves rolled up and dirt and stuff all over him. And priest Telmika says, oh, Vaten, it's nice to see that you're home. Thank you for coming so quickly. And I'm sorry for the loss of your father. Well, yeah, I came as soon as I got your letter. Uh, I really didn't expect to see this big of a greeting, or uh, I didn't see—I didn't expect to see this big of a welcoming. But uh, yeah, what could I do for you? Greystone says, "I also would like to extend my condolences. I also brought you some food." For after your journey home, I figured you might be a little hungry. I know the house has been empty recently, so we brought you some fresh fruits and cheeses and a bottle of wine. And he hands over a really large basket uh, to you. How was your journey home? I can't complain. Wasn't too bad. And I, I appreciate this. I was I was planning on going over to the tavern and getting something to eat soon. Uh, been a been a long trip, but uh, guess I'll be eating here. Yes, of course. And I wonder if we could potentially set up a time to maybe discuss some things about your property and your father's wishes for 
you now that now that he's passed. After you've settled in, of course. All right. Well, when can I? Well, where do you want need me to meet you at your office? Yeah. Once you once you've got that, you know, once you've settled back in, yes, you can you can definitely meet me at the office. Do you remember how to get there? Yeah, I reckon I might. It's been a while, but I mean, lived here for so long. Yeah. Unless you move. Yes. <laughs> nope, it's same place it always was. All right. And Tamika says, Greystone, leave the poor boy alone. He has had a long trip and he needs his rest. Vartan, maybe later this week I can stop by and bring you some food after you settle in a little bit. Maybe I can make you that cake you always loved. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna eye her and just kinda Yeah, maybe. I'm kind of tired. Um, is there anything else that y'all want? Oh, no. Greystone, we really should leave Vartan alone. He has had a long day. And Greystone uh, says, yes, my, my apologies. We, we really should get back. We need to check in with the city guard anyway. Lots, lots has been going on recently, but... I look forward to speaking with you, Master Vartan. Oh yeah. I hope hope things aren't too bad for you. Oh, yes, I appreciate that. And he takes Priest Telmika by the arm and helps her down the four stairs and kinda walks her out away from the property out and back to the road. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn around and go. Y'all know y'all don't have to stand that close to me, right? <laughs> just I you just lost your father. Son, I just want to make sure that you're okay. You know, if you need anything. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay. Well, how about we, how about we open up this basket and, uh, what what time of day is it? It's evening time that you arrived. How about we open up this basket and have us a good, have us a good dinner and, uh, and a drink and, uh, get to know each other. I could go for a drink. Sounds lovely to me. You go to the dining room, you crack open the wine, you dive into the basket of food, and Ovik, Baya, and Vartan talk throughout the entire night, getting caught up on each other's stories, histories, and learning about each other as well as how you were connected to Kyrian. The death of Kyrian really did come as a shock to Vartan and Baya, Maybe even more so to Ovik, who was sent here by the many-faced god to be present during Kyrian's death, only to have been absent when the event happened. All three of you have your own questions and concerns about what happened with Kyrian and legitimate reasons for wanting to figure it out. You two seem like mighty fine folk. I guess I guess uh, we'll have to talk to Judge Greystone, find out what's going on here. Uh... I mean, I don't, I don't imagine y'all want to follow me around, but, I mean, hell, I could probably use the company right now. Of course. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know what happened to him as well. So would I. And anything that you need. I'm sure you're grieving son at this. Whew, I can't imagine. Whatever you need. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't say we left on the best of terms, but... Yeah. Oh, honey, that's got to be hard. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't hate involved, but I mean, I wanted to go, he didn't want me to go. But yeah. I needed to fulfill, fulfill what felt right to me. So, uh wish I could have been around more before he he passed or maybe could have prevented it, I don't know. You know, life is is full of what ifs, but I mean, we'll never know, right? I think it's best to leave it as it is and see what we can do now. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. I'm sure he was very proud of you. Yeah, I don't know about that, but all right. I think she would have filled her mouth with some bread and put an extra roll on his plate after he said yeah. that. I would have definitely uh, downed whatever was in my glass. <laughs> All right, so you guys call it a night. 
Vartan, you particularly get cleaned up after all your travel. It was a few days travel to get back. Pretty much non-stop riding for you. So, you know, getting cleaned up was really nice. And then you all, there are plenty of bedrooms upstairs. The upstairs is is only really bedrooms that, that are on the second floor. But there are five bedrooms up there. So making yourselves at home, you have your own little space that you can go to bed for the night. Thank you for listening to this episode of Ethereal Embrace and a Fool's Quest production. Vartan the Furbog Fighter is voiced and played by Adam Culbertson. Baya Rustin, the half-elf sorcerer, is voiced and played by Tisha. Ovik the Tiefling Cleric is voiced and played by Chris Johnson. And I am Nico, your GM. Please remember to drop us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcatcher. Music provided in part by Midnight Syndicate, makers of the original Dungeons & Dragons soundtrack. If you would like to follow us on social media or say hello to the cast, details on where to find us will be in this episode's notes. Remember, be safe, we love you all, and stay foolish. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.